probably my favorite dating method. The reason it's my favorite dating method is it made a lot of predictions uh, about things that weren't known, and those predictions turned out later on to be accurate. In addition, um, uh, this is the uh, one of the theory I'm going to describe here is the only theory that properly describes magnetic fields in the solar system. Uh, and so as a result, I think it's an interesting because not only does it apply to Earth, but it can apply to basically any planet in the solar system. We start with the idea that Earth has a magnetic field. Hopefully we know that Earth has a magnetic field. It's what makes the Boy Scout compass needle point north, right? Now there are certain facts we know about the Earth's magnetic field. It has been decaying. Uh, we started measuring this in 1890, uh, and since that time it's been decaying. Um, during times in the past, it has reversed, which means during certain times in the past, the Boy Scout compass needle would have pointed south, not north. And that's uh, geologically a pretty, pretty sound uh, statement. There's a lot of good geological evidence for that. Um, some planets have uh, planetary magnetic fields. Other ones don't. So those are a few facts about magnetic fields, the magnetic field of the Earth and magnetic field of planets in general. One question you might ask is, why does the Earth have a magnetic field to begin with? Well. You know, we can't say for 100% sure, but physicists generally agree that there are large electrical currents flowing in the core of the Earth. Uh, and those electrical currents, if you have an electrical current going through a wire, it produces a magnetic field. It's those electrical currents in the core of the Earth that are producing the magnetic field. The problem is how those electrical currents get going, what sustains them, and how do they behave. That's where all the uh, theorizing goes on. Because we think we know it's the electrical currents that cause the magnetic field. The details, however, are a bit sketchy right now. All right, well, once again, we've got this situation where we've got an observable. It's been changing. Perhaps if we know the rate of change and so forth, we can use it to measure the age of the Earth. Well, there are basically two main theories out there about the Earth's magnetic field and the other planetary magnetic fields. The one that I like is called the rapid decay theory. The rapid decay theory actually makes a, uh, an assumption about how planets are created. And, and he actually, the, the fellow who pr produced this theory, Russell Humphreys, says that if you look in Scripture, 1 Peter 3, uh, 2 Peter 3, 5, you find out that the earth was formed out of water and by water. So uh, Humphreys says, let's suppose every planet, not just the earth, but every planet, starts off as a big, a big uh, mass of water. Starts off as a big mass of water, and the molecules in this water all happen to be aligned. If they happen to be aligned, they'll produce a pretty strong magnetic field. The problem is when the water is then changed to make the elements that actually make up the Earth, these molecules are not going to be, uh, are, are not going to be uh, uh, arranged uh, uh, parallel anymore. And as a result, the magnetic field changes. When you have a magnetic field change in the presence of a conductor, you end up having an electrical current. That's how we make electricity today. We spin a magnet inside a coil of wires, and electrical current is produced. So the argument is, we start off with a magnetic field caused by aligned water molecules. When those molecules de-align, the change in magnetic field sets up a current in the conductive core of the Earth that produces the magnet, the magnetic field. Now, if this, in fact, is the way the magnetic field was first set up, it's going to decay over time, uh, mostly due to friction. And according to his calculations, it's on the order of thousands of thousands of years. Now, according to the theory, the current can be reversed under the influence of tectonic activity that actually affects the core of the Earth. And assuming other planets are formed this way, you can use this to calculate other planetary magnetic fields. This is a real detailed mathematical model. I mean, I'd love to get into the math of it, but unfortunately it would put most people to sleep. Uh, so if you, there, in the notes that's on the, that are on the website, you can go to his original paper where he gives you the math behind this to show how this works in his mind. So that's one view of the Earth's magnetic field and how it was formed. The dominant view of how the Earth's magnetic field is formed is called the dynamo theory. The dynamo theory says during the formation of the, Earth's, or of the Earth, Earth's rotation actually cause chemical separations to occur in the outer core of the Earth, which is liquid. The inner core is actually solid because of pressure. The outer core is liquid. And because these chemicals were charged, this set up currents. And uh, 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 because of certain conditions, these currents become pretty complex. And it's these complex currents that were set up due to the original uh, Earth's rotation that caused this magnetic field. 
If you've, ever, if you've ever looked into this, this is similar to something called a dynamo, which actually converts thermal energy or kinetic energy into magnetic energy, and that's why it's called the dynamo theory, because it's mimicking a dynamo, which we can set up in a lab. All right. Since the dynamo uh, of the Earth is a result of random currents, the magnetic field it generates, according to this theory, will be erratic. It'll decay, increase, and sometimes reverse, depending on the conditions at the time. So that's the, magnetic, that's the uh, um, dynamo theory of the magnetic field of the Earth. The dynamo should last as long as the Earth keeps spinning. The strength of the field generated by the dynamo will be erratic, but the dynamo should always persist. So the planet ought to continue to have some kind of magnetic field as long as it's spinning. Once again, assuming that other planets have similar dynamos, you can also use this theory to calculate the magnetic fields of other planets. And once again, this is a very mathematical theory that I don't want to bore you with the math of. All right? But the key is here we have two distinctly different theories. The rapid decay theory, which puts some conditions on the age of the Earth. The dynamo theory, which really doesn't have any conditions for the age of the Earth, but tends to be accepted in those, co in those scientific communities that think the Earth is rather old. OK, here's what's interesting. The dynamo theory has a lot of problems trying to reproduce the data. For example, if you go out to the solar system, it can't even tell you whether or not a planet will have a magnetic field. The dynamo theory, for example, predicts that Mars has a planetary magnetic field because of the speed at which it rotates. However, Mars doesn't have a planetary magnetic field. It has a, what we call a crustal magnetic field, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute, but it's not a planetary magnetic field. Also, Mercury rotates so slowly that the dynamo theory predicts it should not have a magnetic field. In fact, it, it does. Um, using the Earth as a calibration, because in any one of these mathematical theories, you have all these fudge factors that have to be calibrated. So using Earth as a calibration, it can't predict the strength of any other planet's field to any reasonable accuracy. And the other thing that's very interesting is rock samples from both the Moon and Mars both indicate that they had planetary magnetic fields at one time. Remember that crustal magnetic field I was talking about on Mars. It's assumed, and there's some reasons to believe this, that that crustal magnetic field is actually the remnant of the planetary magnetic field. The idea is if the planet has been producing a magnetic field for a long time, a lot of ferromagnetic materials in the crust will become magnetic. Just like if you take an uh, uh, iron nail and put it near a magnet, that iron nail is going to become magnetic. In the same way, if I've got a planetary magnetic field, a good fraction of the crust is going to become magnetic over time. And it's assumed that Mars's crustal magnetic field is the result of the fact that at one time it had a planetary magnetic field. Now, interestingly enough, the rapid decay theory doesn't have any of these problems. In fact, use, um, it correctly predicts the presence or absence of a magnetic field for each planet. In the, in the rapid decay theory, every planet starts off with a magnetic field because they were all formed the same way. However, because of the physical characteristics of the planet, um, some of them will decay more quickly than others. So some of them used to have a magnetic field, but don't anymore. Using Earth as a calibration, it is correct on the strength of the other planet's fields that have been measured. This is particularly interesting because in the, in the uh, notes that are on the website, I link you to his original 1984 paper on this. In his 1984 paper, he used his theory to predict the magnetic field of every planet in the solar system. However, Neptune, Uranus, and Pluto hadn't been measured yet. Nevertheless, his paper predicts what their uh, magnetic field should be. In the 90s, Voyager flew by and measured both Neptune and Uranus. His theory was right on the money. For Uranus, the, uh, the uh, dynamo theory was off by a factor of 10,000. So in the end, this guy has produced a theory of magnetic fields that not only correctly predicts uh, the presence or absence of each magnetic field of the planet, but also predicts the, uh, the value even when it hadn't been measured. Also, it predicts that the Moon and Mars at one time had a magnetic field that should have decayed away. And in fact, in his 1984 paper, he talks about that for Mars, and at that time, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't known that Mars had a solid crustal magnetic field. So in the end, this is another prediction that, uh, that he made that turns out to be true. He's used his theory to make another prediction that we'll find out in five years whether it's true. And that is, um, years ago, we measured the uh, magnetic field of Mercury with a robotic, uh, I think it was Viking. I think that was the name of the robotic uh, ship that went out there and measured uh, Mercury's magnetic field. Well, NASA is now sending another robotic ship called Messenger.